Welcome back. Now, do you know what pulmonary hypertension is or how you can help those struggling with it? Well, lucky for us, Marcia Cerise and Maddie Heenan do, and they're here to educate us. Ladies, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having thank us. You. We really appreciate it. So let's start with that basic. What is pH? Well, pulmonary hypertension, or pH, is a disease that affects the lungs. So you get high pressure in the lungs, whether on the airway side of the lungs, Lungs are really two-sided. You take a deep breath, you have the airway side. There's also the blood flow side. Okay. So when there's disease in either one of those places, that puts a tremendous strain on the right side of the heart. The right side of the heart is responsible for pumping blood to the lungs. So what can happen over time is, here we have a very healthy heart. Both the chambers are the same size. Uh, and the wall thickness is pretty even all the way around. As the heart struggles to push against the high pressure in the lungs, the wall of the right side of the ventricle becomes very thickened, and you can see how this chamber then gets so big because it's trying to press against that high pressure that it actually makes the left side of the heart smaller, and that's wow. the side of the heart that pumps blood to the body. So even though the disease itself or the problem is in the lungs, over time, the heart eventually fails because it cannot keep up with pushing the blood out to the lungs. That was such a great explanation. Oh, Something thanks. I can fo you know, follow along and understand. So somebody that's dealing with this, do we know what some of the symptoms are? Well, it's, it's a very frustrating disease in terms of symptoms because the symptoms are so vague. Mm -hmm. Shortness of breath. Yeah. Is, is a primary symptom, and there are many, many reasons you can be short yeah. of breath, and so often it's a un misunderstood or misdiagnosed disease, essentially. Fatigue. Yeah. Fatigue with activity is initially a, a symptom. Sadly, many patients have symptoms for up to three years before they're finally diagnosed, yeah. and during that entire time, the heart is weakening under that strain and beginning to fail, and then later in the disease process, as the heart can no longer keep up, a, a person might have swelling in their feet or ankles or swelling in their abdomen. They may have chest pain, feel like they're gonna pass out when they bend over. And sadly, many patients don't get diagnosed until the disease is fairly advanced for that reason. Do we maybe know the causes of this? Well, it's, that's another thing about the disease that's somewhat frustrating. We don't truly understand all of the causes of the disease. There are some, some related things that can, can be contributing to it. One is disease on the airway side. If you have untreated or undiagnosed sleep apnea, that can lead to the disease. Interstitial lung disease, which is a scarring of the air sacs, can contribute to it. Um, COPD can contribute to it. Oh. There's also a disease process where the actual vessel that leads from the lungs to the heart becomes very thickened. So on the top here, we have a completely normal artery, beautiful looking garden hose. Here, these cells start to overgrow and then the place where the blood can flow becomes constricted. And then in the late signs of the, or in the late stages of the disease, not only are there, is there a complete overgrowth of the cells, but the vessel itself becomes very stiff and that's what puts stress on the heart. Well, I know I've already learned so much. You do such a great job of, of explaining. Thank you. And we're having an event, a walk. Uh, tell mm -hmm. me the reasons why this walk is so important. Well, we need a lot more funding and research to, to take place so that more drugs can be developed and eventually they can have a cure for this terrible disease. So that's why we've organized the inaugural event here in Tucson of a walk, which is going to be April 2nd at Reed Park uh, near Ramada Number 10. Unfortunately, we do have a cutoff for people to sign up, which is around March 7th, maybe up to about March 10th, if they want to get a t-shirt. Okay. And the t-shirts are really cute. This is the design for the t-shirt for the with the two little <laughs> super cute. cartoon suaros, yeah. That is and, super cute. <clears throat> and then we're going to have tons of money makers taking place. We're going to have raffles. We have over 100 items to raffle. And we also have some fantastic bigger prizes that will be silent auctions. We have weekends at Ventana Canyon, Hacienda del Sol, and uh, Westward Look. This necklace was donated by uh, Lori and Lisa Designs. Some, some people may recognize their work, and that's going to be uh, an auction item. There's going to be lots of entertainment. We're having a DJ, and we're also going to have um, mariachis playing. Well, this is the, the this is the way to start out uh, <laughs> the first time for this event. I'm going to remind everybody how they register, and of course that cutoff date one more time. But ladies, thank you so much. We've already learned a lot just uh, from sitting down with we you today. We really appreciate you thank having you so us much. here and putting some light on the disease. Oh, absolutely. The PH walk we were just talking about will take place April 2nd at 7 a.m. at Reed Park. Make sure to register by March 7th to get that T-shirt, and to learn more, visit CrowdRise.com.
www.desertdivas.com and search for Desert Divas or call 975-6449.